What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you guys my electric bike. Now in a previous video I showed you guys using 18650s, kind of giving you a rough idea on how I made the battery pack. This is what I made the battery pack for was this bicycle. The bike is built on a Schwinn Sidewinder that I bought at Walmart for a little under $200. It's a pretty good mountain bike. It's got front suspension and that's about it really for features. It's got the cassette, it's got a, a Shimano cassette. So it shifts nice and smooth, however that's not the focus here. This is the focus. It's powered by get that an e-bike kit. It's a 500 watt motor, but it's rated at 36 volts at 500 watts. In this application, I'm actually running it closer to 48 volts because I'm running 12S lithium ion battery pack. So I'm getting a little bit more than 500 watts out of this motor. And this specific motor is wound for torque. I don't know the exact uh, windings on this, but I got it used actually off Craigslist. This motor was built back in 2008. You know, here we are 2015 and it still rank, it still cranks the uh, power out just fine. So it's rated at 500 watts on 36 volts, so we're pushing a little more. Little things I got, there's the controller. The cool thing about the controller is it was a 36 volt kit. However, the controller is rated up to 48 volts. And it has some kind of weird feature where if you hook up a wire, it'll limit uh, the current to regulate only 200 watts of power but I don't use that obviously so the rack also bought at Walmart that seemed to be the easiest way to mount this one of those 12 volt marine battery boxes so I used the the battery box seemed to be the easiest way to protect the batteries and to mount them and then keep the battery closed I have a bungee cord that I zip tied on the other side as far as wiring the connect the batteries are wired up in series so you have I'll go ahead and show you uh, mine, don't mind the power tool batteries. This is something else I was messing with. So we got four of these. Each of these packs contains 30 18650 and they're wired in 10P by 3S. So there's 10 cells, 10 18650s per cell, and those are wired all up in series. So four packs total to equal 12S lithium ion. So I have 120 lithium uh, 120 18650s in this box. As far as the capacity, well, I haven't really capacity tested these, but I would guess between, I mean, they're used that, they're obviously, they're used uh, lithium ion cells, but I'd guess between, you know, on the real low end, 10 amp hours, and on the real good end, 20 to 25 amp hours. So, you know, so far I've only been able to get about five. On an average run, I only pull five, because the way I charge these, I charge these all in parallel with my, I have a Turnigy, it's, it's called a reactor charger, that's a 20 amp charger. And what I do is I charge these batteries at four amps, and I can get a full charge in a, about, I think the last charge I did was three hours. And that three hour charge, mind you, I used that much power going 12 miles. So yesterday I took the bike out, I went on a 12 mile ride, came back, let the battery sit overnight, charged it the next day, and it took 20,000 milliamps. So if you divide 20,000 by four, because there's four separate packs, you get about five amp hours per pack. And even at the end, the packs were still at 3.87 volts per cell. And that's pretty good. They stay relatively balanced, you know. Mind you, these are used cells, so they're not perfect, but you know, I think they work pretty well for my application. So that's the battery. Like I said, the lithium-ion stuff works great. The pack probably cost me 50 bucks to make. Honestly, uh, using laptop batteries, or especially if you buy them at a computer repair shop, they think they're garbage. I'm telling you, pick them up for you know a few dollars a piece, and you know you might have one or two bad cells, but if you're willing to put the time. An effort into soldering up the packs and if you know what you're doing working with you know batteries and you're comfortable with that then you can make a really effective pack for very very little money so as far as the controls go we have the the bell dash right here and you can see on this one I have this is the trip I'm on right now I'm only at 2.7 miles I'm still riding around just kind of exploring I like to do urban exploring on this bike because you know no insurance and all that so I can pretty much ride it anywhere and this place already has a pretty good sidewalk infrastructure and that makes these bikes perfect and extremely practical so I currently have, let's see if I can find it, 191 miles on this setup. And I'm talking this battery pack, uh, the motor, the controller. Um, the wiring's pretty simple. I have two of these wires. It's just one for a positive, one for the negative. So it's basically four strands. And if you look, it runs up here, runs up here through a 30 amp fuse. Uh, it's a good idea to have a fuse anytime you're messing with uh, you know, lithium batteries. And then from there, it runs into the controller. And then from the controller, you have three wires for your for each three phases in the motor and then you have your Hall effect sensor cable because this is a censored setup and then you have another set of wires going to your throttle this is your throttle right here so top speed top speed is about 20 miles an hour 
Um, going up hills, it will, you know, it'll lug down about, you know, 15, 16, and I'm talking some pretty steep hills, and even then, I mean, it's still chugging along. And then, but like I said, about 20 miles an hour is my average, and that's extremely practical for, you know, just traveling, or even if you need to use it for, to get to work or whatever. But for me, I just urban explore with it, so 20 miles an hour is perfect. And that's on a motor that's designed for torque. So if you would actually get a proper 48 volt rated motor that, you know, was a little bit more designed for performance, you could get even more out of it. But 20 miles an hour does great. It doesn't use a whole lot of power. Like I said, I went on a 12 mile ride yesterday and I went, I used only five amp hours out of the entire 48 volt combined pack. So that's, that's incredible. If you break that down, that's, that's, you know, you're going a mile, you know, do the math. I'm not really good at math, but you get the idea. So five amp hours used at 12 miles. It's pretty remarkable. So I'm extremely happy with the setup. The motor is very torquey. If it's wet outside, I can gun it and it'll break traction. You know, being a front wheel drive hub motor, it's not the best. I kind of wish I had a back, but like I said, I got the motor on Craigslist, so you can't complain. It was used. I got it for about 150 bucks, which nowadays, if you look on eBay, you can actually get the Chinese uh, e-bike kits. They're 48 volt. And the price has significantly gone down on those, and you can get those for about 180 shipped these days. But you know, I think uh, I got a good Craigslist deal, and that's an that's a proper e-bike kit motor. It was made by a company called e-bike kit, and they're actually still in business. They they still make kits, and they're pretty pricey kits. And I I assume when this sold back in 2008, it was for you know probably close to five six hundred dollars, and that came with lead acid batteries. I'm talking the the 12 volt 10 amp hour sealed lead acid, and they were pretty heavy, so. This definitely, you know, with the lithium ion battery, it makes a big, big, big performance boost as well as range because the way lithium ion works is your voltage doesn't sag compared to lead acid. So the battery's voltage is gonna stay pretty, it's gonna drop a little bit off of your charge. It's gonna stay pretty flat lined until the batteries start to die and then they drop off very steep. So throughout that whole flat line, you have constant power, constant speed. You know, on the ride back from the 12 mile ride, I still felt like I had plenty of torque and I had to climb some pretty steep hills, but yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this bike setup. I mean, total money, I mean, 50 bucks for the battery pack, 150 for the motor and controller setup, and less than 200 for the bike. So that's that's all I have into this. A little bit of work goes a long way. I did all the wiring myself. It's not professional. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to hide it. I didn't do a fancy wire tuck, but everything I got at a local store and, you know, the motor on Craigslist. So I'm very happy with this e-bike. So if any of you thinking about building an electric bike, you can do it relatively cheaply. And I'm telling you, the batteries, the batteries, the batteries, batteries are very important because that's going to give you your range that's going to give you you know if you're looking for whatever speed if you want torque um the batteries is normally the biggest stinger when you put together an electric bike the batteries are always going to be the most expensive so you know if you want if you're willing to do like i said do a little bit of work with lithium ion cells you know a lot of people say oh you can't you know reuse dead laptop batteries you know the cells are garbage i read that all the time on the internet on the i like to read the forms and read what other people are doing with batteries and some people insist you cannot reuse those, but I'm telling you firsthand, I've gotten great results out of used dead, quote unquote, dead laptop batteries that I've taken apart. So if you're willing to go the extra mile, do the work yourself, hey, you know, more power to you. But I really love this setup. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just, you know, feel free to let me know and I'll do the best I can to, to help you guys out. But uh, if you have any questions on the bike itself, hey, I'm more than happy to help you guys. So for those of you watching, thanks for watching. I did a few other videos, like I said, I did one kind of briefly going over the battery, so if you'd like a more in-depth, hands-on approach on the batteries, just, just let me know. Um, I'm looking for new ideas for videos, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.